in, today, to, in today's tough topic, we're going to be talking about uh, divorce. Now, a lot of people have opinions about this already, so I will try to be helpful and clear. Um, yeah, because that's really what we want to find out. We want to know the truth behind things, not something that reaffirms our view. So let's take this little piece by little piece, and I want to ask you to please wait to form an opinion until I finish with what I have to say. First off, yes, God hates divorce. And this is just all throughout Scripture, um, you know, really from the beginning to the end. God never had divorce in mind with all these things. And in fact, in Malachi, he even clearly says this, God hates divorce. And um, what was happening was men were just kind of using women and then just throwing them out. And they were like used goods. And the value of them was really being lost. And that's really not what God had in mind because Genesis says God created the male and female. God created them to be like that. But instead of accepting one another, they were just simply, the men were just simply throwing the woman away. So that brings up the question, okay, so as long as we're getting divorced for good reason, does that make divorce okay? So hold on. Divorcing someone for the purpose of marrying someone else is condemned as well. See, what people do is, well, I don't want to cheat on my husband, so instead of doing that, or, or wife, so instead of doing that, I will simply divorce them so that I can get with this other person. But that's exactly what Jesus said not to do. He said, if someone divorces their wife and then marries another, they are committing adultery. What do you think he was talking about? He was talking about people who put away their spouse so that they can get married to someone else. I believe that's specifically in the Gospel of Matthew, but honestly, all the Gospels talk about things like this, so it's kind of hard to say, when, when we're talking about a concept, to say, hey, this one verse. Um, for a lot of this, though, I really haven't included a whole lot of verses just because it's so dominant throughout the Bible. Um, God hates cheating. In fact, he hates it so much that if someone was caught cheating... Uh, they would be put to death in the law. Now, if your marriage has suffered from the case of adultery, one or both people having cheated on the other, um, I will say that it will be difficult. It will be hard. It will be very hurtful. But you can heal from it, and you can move forward. Um, it will take a lot of effort on both of your parts. It will take a conscious daily decision to put it behind you. It will take putting safeguards in place to make sure you don't do it again. It will take, and many times counseling, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Okay, just, if you are committed to make it work, you can make it work. If both of you are committed to make it work. Now, obviously, if one person has decided they're not going to try, there's not a whole lot you can do. You can still try to win them back. You can still try to do whatever necessary. But even if they have decided that they don't want to make it work and they're just done, act in such a way as to act with honor. And I know that's hard to hear, especially in the wake of such a painful process as adultery. But in the end, it will make you a better person. And when you choose to not be bitter, especially, especially... In such a case that will have a lasting impact on you now I do want to say this when someone chooses to cheat it's not the other person's fault the person who cheated you you who cheated you made a decision and it was nobody else's fault the first step to moving forward is admitting that it was your fault you didn't have to cheat that's just that's just a fact in my opinion it's probably better to just divorce than to, than to go behind your spouse and and, and, and cheat on them but I'm not God, <laughs> so keep that in mind. That's just my own opinion. Um, but uh, you can definitely move forward. You can definitely, definitely, definitely move forward if you're both committed. Um, and sometimes it's going to seem like the other person isn't overly committed. Sometimes our feelings get a little bit cloaked by the hurt. So don't go by what you think. Just do your best to heal the marriage. 
and take it day by day, take it moment by moment. Sometimes you're going to just need to get away from it for a second and get some air, go for a walk. Um, don't gossip about the other person, don't cheat, Don't. it's not nobody else's business what happens between you and, you and your partner. So, yeah, I, I don't know how much more there can, there can be to say on that. Um, God didn't intend for divorce, but he also didn't intend for people to be used and tossed. See, the Jews did this thing where a man would just get tired and divorce a woman. And uh, if you look in the different Gospels, they say it, they say it a little bit different. Mark, for, I think it's Mark, uh, says, for instance, about divorce, you know, any man who divorces his wife and does this, or any woman who divorces his husband and does this. Whereas Matthew just says, any husband who divorces his wife. And the reason why is because in the Jewish culture, men were more... Um, I don't know if there's a nice way to say this, more of a possessor, um, and not as much in Greek and Roman culture. So it's a little bit of a thing, but I'll try and just keep this brief. Um, God didn't intend for people to, I mean, just look at the ministry of Jesus himself. He helped people. When God gave us marriage and sex, it was under this idea of, Becoming one flesh, being a help to, help to each other, being there for each other. He, he wanted people to not be seen as trash. And sadly, a lot of times after divorce, that's exactly what people feel about themselves. I'm a waste of space. I'm trash. And that's just not true. That's just not true. Um, I think it's important in all this to say that God never once said that he wouldn't hear the prayers of someone who got a divorce. Now... Obviously, um, I don't want you to take this too far. I'm not saying divorce isn't a sin. Okay, but what I am saying is sometimes people make it a paramount sin instead of looking at it in view of other sins. For instance, in First Peter, uh, Peter specifically says, Hey, you husbands, if you mistreat your wife, God will not hear your prayers. Well, you take that, and it's like, well, hmm. Um, so I think it goes to stand, it goes to reason that um, I think it stands to reason that God did not intend for divorce, um, and He didn't intend for uh, the husband or the wife mistreating one another. You see, in the gospel, Jesus said about um, the reason why divorce was allowed in the law was because of hardness of heart, and. In my experience as a pastor, the majority of times that people get a divorce, it's because they've fallen out of love, which means I don't have feelings for them. But feelings are not a factor in a commitment. If I go and take a mortgage from a bank, and then a couple years later I say, look, I'm, I don't want to pay on this mortgage anymore. I don't feel like it anymore. The agreement was to buy the house. I made an agreement. It's not something I feel like doing or don't feel like doing. It's like an agreement I made. And the same is true for marriage. A lot of times we try to make it all about what we feel like doing. You're not always going to feel like being married to someone. I mean, honestly, sometimes it's just like I want to spend the money my way. I want to go live my way. I, you know, everybody wants has moments of like, like moments of that. But um, really, the, the, the truth is that Jesus really um, made a blanket statement there, and that just can't be can't be ignored. The most times that I see people getting divorced, it's not for any good reason. Um, it's because, you know, my husband did this or my wife did this. And instead of trying to find healing and trying to move forward, they put a cap on their love and say, I'm not willing to go beyond this point. <sighs> I really don't want to say too much because I don't want to... Every situation is really unique, and so I don't want to try and make uh, an easy fix for a very complicated problem because divorce and the issues surrounding divorce really are complicated problems. Um, I will say that many people mess up um, with abuse in marriage. Now, some people say, oh, I don't abuse my spouse because they don't physically hit them. But 
verbal abuse is still abuse, especially in a marriage. When you criticize your partner and you pick them apart and you constantly put them down, that's abusing your partner verbally. Now, you might not touch them, but that is still abuse. I think that needs to be covered. So in any marriage, though, there's going to be moments of, you know, somebody says something that was mean or hurtful. Somebody, you know, maybe, I don't want to condone abuse here, but sometimes two married people who, who genuinely do love each other, they might accidentally do something like, I hesitate saying this because I hope, I hope it will bring clarity instead of confusion, but there was this, these married people, and after about five years of being married, um, the wife got mad at the husband and slapped him in the face. So he turned and slapped her in the face. And they stopped there, and nobody was really physically hurt. And they never did it again. <laughs> what I'm getting at is this. Nobody's perfect. And marriages are two unperfect people trying to make it work. <laughs> And so you have a lot of problems there. Sometimes one partner will decide to just abandon the other one. There's not much you can do about that. But I'm saying as much as it depends on you, do the right thing. And whatever happens, even if it does end in divorce, as much as it depends on you, do the right thing. Um, however, I will say this, that if physical abuse, especially physical abuse, is a normal occurrence, and what I mean by normal occurrence is it happened more than like once. One time is, oh, you know, an accident whatever, a fit of rage, whatever you want to call it. Nobody was really hurt. It was something minor like a slap. But even in the even if it just happens one time, there's actual physical harm. This is a very big red flag that does need to be taken very seriously. And when it happens repeatedly, being any more, more than just one time, something definitely has to change. Now, as a pastor, I've made a commitment to never condone divorce. I will never tell someone to get divorced. Some pastors get around this by saying, okay, um, so get a separation. I don't really see that as much more helpful. But I will say this. Wh whatever, whatever happens, when there's abuse, something definitely does need to change. And unless the issue is dealt with and corrected, it will probably repeat itself. Now, people who abuse other people will oftentimes, oh, I'm sorry. You know, they'll oftentimes say that, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I never meant to. Uh, whatever, they'll do whatever to manipulate the other person so that they can remain in control, so that they can hit them again. And those kinds of people really don't change. Even when faced with the prospect of divorce, they really don't change. And I don't really believe that God expects us to stay in such a destructive relationship. Once again, I don't want to have sway over this. You know, if, if you decide to get a divorce, it needs to be between you and God, not between me and you, or between your girlfriends or your boyfriends. And, the, you know, just this, it really is somewhat of a messy situation. But with all that being said, something definitely has to change in the case of abuse. And even if it just happens one time, that's a very big, very big um, problem that needs to be addressed as quickly as possible. But I want to I want to end on this, a little bit of a wor word of encouragement more than anything. Look, a lot of people have been divorced. And if you have been divorced, there's still hope. It's not the end of your life. I know it, it hurts, um, but it's not the end. And if it was something wrong that you did, there is forgiveness to be found too. Um, God wants to heal you from your past. He doesn't want, want to make you relive your past. A lot of people won't get divorced and won't get married again because of a, of a failed first marriage. And God doesn't want you to live in that shame and guilt and fear. He doesn't want you to live like that. He wants you to live, to be free. And uh, so to that prospect, this is how, how anybody can get over divorce. First off, it's a timely process. It's not going to happen overnight. Second off, forgive them. Forgive yourself. Forgive everyone involved. That means just let it go. Nobody won. It's nobody's fault. Oh, well, they cleaned me out in the divorce. Nobody wins in a divorce. Really, honestly, genuinely, nobody ever wins in a divorce. There's more to life than having stuff. And if, if they really messed you up financially, I'm sorry that that happened, but they're not the enemy. If you ever want to move on and heal, you have to stop seeing them as the enemy, as the bad person, as a stupid person. 
you made a decision to marry someone and it didn't work out. I'm sorry. Um, all I can say is if you haven't gotten married yet, don't get married flippantly. You know, do it with thought. Look to see how the person handles or, or treats their, their parents. Look to see how they treat um, other people. Look to see if they have healthy relationships in their life. Look to see if they have just warning signs of not being stable. Um, are they on medications? You know, how do they treat waiters and waitresses? You know, just look and observe and, and, and think and ask other people. And don't ask their mom because the mom will always validate them. <laughs> um, I guess moms have the habit of seeing the, be seeing the best and the worst of people. But anyways, so go through the process of forgiving them because you need it. You really do. And you will not uh, be able to move forward without it. And honestly, divorce and the harm that goes with it can cripple our relationship with God too. So really forgive them. God, God wants us to be forgiving. God won't forgive us if we don't forgive other people. Just put it behind you. Let it go. No matter how painful it is, no matter what the circumstance, forgive and move on. And then the next thing, pray. You know, just, just find your wholeness by seeking God. Pray and ask God, Lord, whatever I did wrong, forgive me. And stop doing whatever you did wrong, obviously. And, you know, uh, pray that God would restore you and would heal you. And uh, don't rush into another relationship. Um, divorce is very long-lasting. Very long-lasting. And to hop from one bad relationship into another bad relationship, sometimes history just repeats itself, especially in the case of abusive relationships. You can go from one bad relationship to another, and then you feel like you need them when you really don't. And uh, so I hope that... I hope that you see what I'm trying to say. Yeah, divorce is bad, but things aren't always that simple. And I don't think that God thinks that they're simple either. And whatever the situation, God wants to heal, he wants to restore, he wants to forgive. God doesn't want to punish us. He's not waiting for us to mess up. So when we do mess up, you know, be quick to fix the problem. And uh, do your best to honor the commitment that you made to your spouse. And... Uh, don't get into a relationship, a serious relationship, without putting serious thought into it. But with with all that being said, you know, God doesn't want us to live in shame and guilt. And uh, really, the reason why I wanted to record this, don't use this video as something to try and prove a point or win an argument with someone else. And don't ever use the Bible as an opportunity to uh, start fights or to win fights against someone else. Win, whatever that means. Um, instead, I'm more saying this for you individually as a warning to you and i hope genuinely if you if you are watching this and you have been divorced i genuinely genuinely hope that you find the healing um and forgiveness and restoration that god has for you because he doesn't want you to live in guilt and shame absolutely not so uh, okay